place you are accepted, wanted, and loved. This is not a performance. It is an opportunity to meet the lover of your heart.
the darkness running had you bring the broken back to life only you can only you can you set me free from every chain you fill my heart with songs of praise only you can only you can jesus you're the only reason that i'm even breathing i am wide awake Yeah. 
So the first thing Jesus says to his disciples is, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. The last thing he says is, go, go and, and, and make these disciples, these, 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 these people who follow me. And in between those two statements, he spent a lifetime of showing them what it means to follow God, showing them what it means to, to, to make disciples or to, to fish for men. It's this idea of we get more and more people to come under the authority of God to actually submit to him and live the way that God wants us to. And so he tells his disciples, he goes, follow me, and I'm gonna teach you how to do this. He spends his whole life doing it, then he goes, now go and do the same thing. Where it gets weird is that nowadays, there are millions of people on this earth who call themselves followers of Jesus, but their lives look nothing like his, and, and they're not obeying the things that he called them to do and yet in their hearts they're convinced they're followers. When we were kids, this was a lot easier. Remember when we were kids and we played that game, follow the leader? It's pretty easy, right? The leader pats his head, you pat your head, the leader pats his knee, you pat your knee, leader flaps his wings. You just kind of follow and do whatever he does. It's weird though, in the church we've done this weird thing where we go, well, the rules to follow Jesus are different than follow the leader. See, and follow Jesus, we don't actually have to do what he does. We just do it in our heart. It doesn't really make any sense. I mean, imagine a kid on a lounge chair playing follow the leader and going, yeah, I'm flapping my wings in my heart. You know, it just doesn't, why does that work in church and not anywhere else? Look, when, when, when my daughter comes to me and I say, hey, go, go clean your room, she knows better. She, she's not gonna come back a couple hours later and say, hey, dad, I memorized what you said to me. He said, go clean your room. You know, what am I gonna say? Oh, good job, that's what I wanted. No, and, and she's not gonna come to me and say, dad, I can say, go clean your room in Greek, listen. That's not gonna fly, and, and what if she says, you know what, my friends and I, we're gonna gather together and every week we're gonna have a study and we're gonna figure out what it would look like if I cleaned my room. <laughs> no, none of that's gonna fly, just go and clean it, she knows that. So why do we think that this type of thinking or this type of talk is gonna work with Jesus? I mean, Jesus was as black and white as you get. He would look at people and he'd say, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I say? He says that in Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord when you don't do what I ask you to do? I mean, why would you call someone your master and then not listen to him? And, and he says in Matthew 7, 21, he goes, listen, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, is gonna enter the kingdom of heaven. It's only the one who actually does the will of my Father who is in heaven. See, these words that we give without action behind it, that was never acceptable to Jesus. He says it's pretty simple. When I say follow me, you, you, you follow me, you do what I do. And when I ask you to do something, you just obey.
I love about how Jesus teaches is that he's always completely honest. He doesn't hide anything. He just lays it all out there. Like, like when he told the people, hey, follow me, he explains to them how difficult it's going to be to follow him. He goes, listen, if you follow me, 
It's not going to be this life of luxury. In, in fact, I don't even know where I'm going to sleep tonight. And not only that, but people are going to hate you for following me. And not only that, but there's going to be all these temptations in the world and you're going to have to fight all these things. And, and even your own family might be against you. If you follow me, you may end up getting crucified like I'm about to get crucified. See, sometimes we're not that honest with people. We try to talk people into following Jesus by just saying, hey, if you follow Jesus, you can be forgiven, you, you'll get to go to heaven, you can have intimacy with God, and all those things are true, but we neglect this other part that Jesus was very upfront with, saying, look, it's very, very difficult to follow me. There, there's a wide road, and most people are gonna take this wide and easy road, but there's this narrow road that leads to life. And very few people will find it. And it's a hard path, he explains. But he also tells them, but I'm worth it. I am so worth it. The question of following Jesus maybe isn't so much about how do we follow Jesus because I think that's obvious. How do you follow Jesus? Just do what he says. He says, feed the poor. Okay, go feed the poor. Love your enemies. Okay, I'll go love my enemies. You know, do good to those who hate you. Okay, if someone hates me, I'm going to do something good for you. He, he, he explains, and, and so it's, it's really not confusing how to follow Jesus. Maybe the question that most people struggle with is, is why? Why should I follow this Jesus then? If, if this road is so narrow and so difficult, then why should I follow him? And part of me goes, do we really need an answer to why? I mean, after all, isn't it just a, a little bit of a privilege and an honor that we get to follow the Creator? But. If I'm perfectly honest, let me tell you why I decided to follow him. The reason why I decided to follow Jesus is because Jesus said, Jesus promised, he says, I am gonna come back to that earth and I'm gonna come back someday and I'm gonna judge the earth. And when I read about his judgment, like when I read the book of Revelation, it's terrifying. And uh, you, you have in Revelation 6, for example, you have these people who are, who are really the biggest people on the earth. I mean, they're, they're, they're larger than life. You talk about the kings, the performers, the, the people we look at as just up on a pedestal, but you have them screaming and, and hiding in caves when, when Jesus starts to pour out his wrath on the earth. In fact, they're hoping that the rocks will come and crush them because they're saying, someone hide us. Hide us from the wrath of this one who sits on the throne and hide us from the wrath of the lamb because the day of his wrath has come and who can stand it? Who has even heard about that phrase, the wrath of the lamb? And when we talk about Jesus, we'd rather think of him as, as like a little lamb. We like to think of him as that, that guy with the long blonde feathered hair that's just petting sheep and playing with little kids and so gentle. And yeah, there's that side of him, but understand in the Bible, Jesus talks about hell more than he talks about heaven. Jesus explains that I'm a powerful being and you want to be on my side. And so honestly, I follow Jesus because in some ways I think, what other choice do I have?
só sei me fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders chapter 6, Jesus said some really difficult words, and this is in front of thousands of people. Thousands of people are listening to Jesus, and when he's done teaching, everyone leaves except for 12. Everyone's leaving going, oh, I, can't, I can't take that message, I can't stomach that. And, and Jesus looks at the 12 who are left, and he just asks them a very simple question. He goes, you guys want to leave also? Peter's answer was really profound and yet simple. He goes, where are we going to go? And he says, you have the keys to eternal life. I know your message is hard, but where are we going to go? 
you think you're out for this, this life that's so difficult, and you are, but you find out that there's actually blessing, and you actually find more peace in taking this hard road than going with this wide road that everyone else is gonna go on. And Jesus is, just take this, take this, follow me. And you start learning that all the things that he's saying let go of and walk away from, those are actually things that were gonna destroy you anyways. Jesus says, if you're going to try to save your life, you're going to end up losing it. But if you lose your life for my sake, then you're going to find it. In other words, if you're going to try to hold on to all these things and try to save every bit of life and everything that brings you pleasure, he goes, you're going to end up losing your life that way. But if you, if you would surrender to me, if you would just trust me, trust that I have something better and let go of everything else, he goes, then you're really going to find life. I mean, think about it. You really think that Jesus needs anything from us? He's, he's the creator. Je Jesus, Jesus wants to give. He wants to bless. In, in fact, when Peter says, ah, oh, Jesus, we gave everything up for you, Jesus quickly stops Peter and says, hold on, hold on. He goes, everything you gave up, you're going to end up being rewarded for it. I I'm going to give you a hundred times what you gave up. He goes, don't you understand this life of giving and serving other people? He goes, you're actually going to find blessing in it because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And, and, and so when you let go and you start surrendering those things and you start following Jesus, you realize that, wow, surrendering to him is actually a great thing. And as we surrender, it's the God of the universe who, who then humbles himself and says, yes, I'm your leader, but I'm going to serve you. I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to die on a cross for you. I'm going to listen to your prayers. And in a sense, we've got God himself caring for us. There's a reason why Jesus says, follow me. It's not because he needs me. It's not because he needs anything that, that I have to offer. But he's telling me, follow me, because this is the way that I'm going to lead you to a life that goes way beyond anything you could have ever come up with by yourself.
for the moments And I'm here in your presence All noise dies down Lord, speak to me now You have all my attention I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord, I know my heart wants more of you My heart wants something new So I surrender all All I want is to live within your love Be undone by who you are My desire is to know you
chasing to the wind I am desperate for a touch of heaven Whoa, 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 whoa.
Will you pray with us? Dear Lord, we love you. Let us rest there just for a moment. Sitting in your throne room. With you sitting on your throne. Now, maybe many of us come with different reactions to that moment. Maybe some of us in this moment just want to just crawl up in your lap and grab your face and laugh with you and celebrate. For others, maybe the exact same posture, but needing to look of your forgiveness, of your grace, of your compassion. For others, Father, maybe we just want to hide in the corner and we don't even want to turn to look your way. But we know in this moment you beckon us as you lean forward, ready to embrace your child as they slowly turn. For others, Father, it might be the first time we even considered such a notion. Maybe we've been part of the church thing our whole life. Maybe we've never stepped into a church before and we're watching this later on a laptop someplace many months from this moment. But yet your spirit is moving and we hear you call. We know that something's different. Father, in those moments, just reveal your love. Call us to you. Continue to woo our hearts, Father. Remind us of your beauty and your victory over sin and over death. Remind us that you've created us so you know us. You purposed us. And that while some of us are standing on some paths you never intended for us, maybe someone else put us there, maybe we put a ourselves there, but right now we're in your throne room with Jesus on the throne and we can turn we can lift our heads we can say Jesus we need you Jesus I believe you're the son of God Jesus I know you died and rose again for me and that you are offering right now forgiveness and purpose and power Friendship, lordship in my life. And I need you and I come to you in this moment, Father. Whatever posture we find ourselves in, may we all end up in the same place. With you, in you. In your spirit moving in this moment. Father, this whole night's been about following Jesus. Again, not because you need us, but because you are leading us to what you originally designed. You're leading us to what you originally purposed. You're leading us away from danger and wasting months and days, years, following you and the victory that you've already claimed. So as we come before you, will you help us Will you help us to release, to let go of, and destructure parts of who I was when we first started this time together? 
whatever comfort zones, whatever sin, whatever walls that you deconstruct, that you tear down, that you simplify anything Satan could be using to distract and just make us how you see us to release all that off our shoulders to take those backpacks and that luggage and put it not just to the side of the room but we just destroy it as it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross and strip us down to humility to our need to our desire that can only be filled by you Help us to see those things in this moment, Father. What commands have you called us to that we have not been doing? You call us to feed the poor. Are we following you? You call us to let go of this logic of this world and lean into the fullness of who you are. Are we following you? You call us to impact this world and show them and tell them the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Are we following you? When we humble ourselves before you, Father, we can see these things more clearly. And then you will lift us up. Oh, Father, lift us up. We're not just ones who want to be deconstructed. Father, we want to be constructed in your name and in your image and in your glory. Father, we want to hear that call of Jesus say, follow me. We want to be able to have the hearts and the commitment that when you say, who shall I send, that we quickly cry out, me, send me. Build us up only in Christ. Build us up into you. We shape us, we form us. We shape us, we form us, Father. We are yours, take what was lost. And let it be found. This moment is between us and you and your spirit moving in. Move, Holy Spirit. Psalms 5, start verse 11 says this But let all who take refuge in you, Lord, rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And spread your protection over them. And those who love your name may exalt in you and you alone. For you bless the righteous, O Lord, and you cover him. You cover her with favor as with a shield. We love you, Jesus. Let us move there. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
I'm sorry, what was that? I said encore. Oh, encore. <laughs> Did you guys have fun tonight? Yeah. More importantly, did you meet the spirit here tonight? That was the whole point of it, just to worship him and have time with him. Guys, we appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Guys, thank you so much for all the hard work that you guys have done and all you put into this. Love you guys. And we'll see you Sunday morning. God is good. Thank you, guys. Be blessed.